Hey y'all, it's David Ducker coming back at you. And today, we we'll am be talking about semi-sandbox style, triple S. And I'm going to be comparing and contrasting uh, two campaigns I've run recently. These are both short mini campaigns. Uh, one is finished, which is Dragon Riders of Moo. One unfinished as of yet. Hopefully, I get to finish it at some point in time. But... I thought I'd contrast these two styles of GM prep here. One is, is what I'd call pure sandbox. <clears throat> the other, uh, perhaps you can call a narrative sandbox or a story sandbox. Remember, Dragon Riders of Moo was my experiment in getting some narrative style in, in getting a storytelling game system <clears throat> excuse me, integrated with a role-playing game. And of course, you all know the difference. A role-playing game, you're in character 100% of the time. And in a storytelling game, you have control over things that your character wouldn't have control over. It's a quick definition, but I've done full video length definition and discussion on that. So what we would do in... Let's start with Dragon Riders, because it chronologically it was first similar. What we do in Dragon Riders, we'd have our, our uh, first we make our, our characters. So I give my pitch, the guidelines for making the characters, and we all sat down together and we made the characters. And, uh, and then I asked each person privately and individually. It's very important this is private. I asked them, what do you want? for the first session with your character. You know, do you want somebody to attack him? Do you want somebody to come on to him? Do you want a, a disaster to befall him? Do you want a great boon? What do you want? What do you want me as the GM to throw at this character that would really highlight who they are? A great intro scene. Help me write an intro scene for your character. And then once I had all the players you know, intro scenes, you know, and I had my own stuff to throw in to set up continuing storyline. Then we, we would start and we'd go through, everybody would hit their scene and maybe other people would be in the, the scene with them that could change things and affect it or, or whatever. And after session, and I'd hit, you know, I'd hit my events, the NPC stuff and all that goodness. Then after session... I would uh, go back and do it again. Say, okay, what do you want for next session for your character? You know, and like Tyler was like, oh, I want my character tragedy. Pile tragedy on. Kill my father. Kill my mother. Uh, kill my brother. You know, have, uh, have my hero get maimed. Have my chaplain get really sick. Like horrible buboes and pox all over his face. I want angst to fuel this character. And I said, great. And, and then we tried to get as much angst in there. You know, whereas Andrew was like, oh, I want the... He, he also wanted angst, but he was like, give my father a reason to yell at me. And I could have an argument with my father. Great, great role-playing scene. You know, and he wanted to portray this kind of... This damaged relationship, but they're trying to repair it. But they're such different people. And, you know, just wonderful great relationship role-playing scenes so he'd set up role-playing scenes Tyler would usually set up combat scenes and you know we had other players setting up whatever they wanted to set up and then I'd be having my input and that's what we would do what do you want to happen we each then we take everything that everybody wanted throw it together let it explode and combust at the end of the session when it's all wrapped up you know we do it again what do you want to happen next? And everybody gives a feedback, and I concoct it, and we go out and do it. Right? So narrative style, storytelling style. Uh, not my usual style because it's very prep heavy. I had to talk to everybody between sessions. That's a lot of work, tracking these people down, getting them interested. Some of them like writing novels for me to read. Some of them, uh, they don't care what happens. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't want to know. 
you know, an at session, uh, some of them are really deep in character, hitting heavy role playing, and then some of them are just, you know, they've, they've given me a novel and now they're there. The things are happening to them, and they're absorbing it, but it's like their their role playing depth is not uh, as as strong. And everybody's got different strengths. I'm not saying they're worse players; they're just different players. So that was my experiment there. You know, it was like six, five sessions, whatever it was. It was supposed to be seven. It was a little shorter than that, I think. Uh, in terms of episodes, in terms of actual sessions, I think it was longer because we had some two parters. But so that's one way of doing it. You know, get some narrative style. Your players are helping you, but you just have to divest this time in talking to them all. And then there's so many surprises and so many different writers involved that you, you get a great end result. You know, I, the end result was so great. It was just a lot of work uh, for me because I hate talking to people. And, uh, you know, I hate spending all that time away from the table. Uh, I just, I don't like it. I like the end result, though. Um, so I think everybody should try something like that narrative where it's, it's a little more narrative away from the table at the table. We were all in character. Okay. We were not fooling around with, uh, you know, Oh, I walk outside and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's raining heavily. And, and I see there are barbarians in town. And as a GM, I'd be like, what do you mean it's raining and there are barbarians here? And I'm like, Oh, well, I used to play fate. And uh, in Fate, you can make up the world. And I was like, well, this is not a storytelling game, okay? We are in character. I narrate the world. Not that I even write the world, but I just convey it to you. And then you just react as your character would. You're reactive instead of proactive. But anyway, that's a big tangent, which I've done videos on. In uh, Lost Colonies, much more traditional uh, sandbox style. We had 10 factions. We just throw the players in there. You know, we made a tight team and we just thrown in there. And at table, in session, in character, it's up to you to drive the action where you want it, where your character wants it. You got 10 uh, factions to explore. Who do you go to? Who do you kick in the mouth? Uh, who do you become friends with? Who do you seduce? Uh, do it at the table, do it in character. We don't need to talk to each other between sessions. Not at all. Uh, and, and that's what I like, because it's less work between sessions. You know, I've got my 10 factions. Each one has at least two NPCs. The home faction, I ended up having like 10 NPCs as well. But I knew who each of these people were, what their goals were, what their uh, strengths and weaknesses were, their resources and drawbacks. Uh, and, and you know what your character's doing, what his, all of that, you know your character. So let's just role play. When you walk into a room, I'll jump into the role of this character. We'll have our interaction, whether that's combat or, or whatever it is. And between sessions, we never need to talk to each other. Very, very different style. In my opinion, much less work. And my preferred style but uh, there are certainly other ways to do things, even with a sandbox, uh, because Dragon Riders <coughs> was a sandbox. You could, they could have gone anywhere they wanted. They just needed to tell me beforehand, uh, you know, and they could have talked to anybody they wanted. They just need to tell me beforehand between sessions uh, because I didn't have the world as, as deeply prepped. Uh, because we're doing so many time skips, I couldn't plan ahead. You know, it's like, 10 year time skip and then a 10 year time skip and then a 10 year. And it's like, well, if I had tried to plan ahead, like I just knew so much of my stuff would never get used because we're doing all these time skips. And it's like, will this character still be relevant in 30 years? Well, he's 70 years old now. So probably not. He probably died between the first and second time skip. So because of that, it could, you know, I couldn't do my, style my usual style of sandbox unless i wanted to make like a whole new sandbox between every session but that's not happening that would be a lot of work so instead i said okay you're my players tell me what's going to be on screen i'll prep as best i can 
uh, you help me prep, and then we'll go into it, hit it hot and heavy. That way we can cover, you know, 50 years of, of gameplay or whatever we ended up covering. Uh, whereas Lost Colonies, we're only going to cover a couple years at most. Uh, and that's only because the hyperdrive in uh, Rogue Trader is so slow that it takes months to get anywhere. <laughs> you know, if it were like Warhammer Fantasy and then we're on horseback, instead it would be like a matter of weeks perhaps uh, or months, but, but not that long. The time skip was enforced by distance and logistics rather than the, the narrative. Whereas in Dragon Riders, the narrative was all about the time skip. So the different stories necessitated different tools. Um, so I, I've certainly learned a lot uh, and contrasting them. You know, I learned a lot from Dragon Riders and contrasting them, uh, the, the narrative prep style with the traditional, my traditional sandbox prep style, uh, I think is very interesting. So that's why I just wanted to do this quick video. It's not that quick, actually. It's going to be like 12 minutes. Uh, how do you do your sandbox? How much do you like uh, to talk to your players between sessions? How much do you like to plan ahead, to metagame, uh, to narrate, to, to make it a storytelling game rather than a role-playing game? Because you certainly can hybridize the two, especially when uh, all the narrative and storytelling stuff is away from table. And at the table, it's straight role-playing. It's still a role-playing game. At the table, we're just putting a writer's hat on all the players. So you're being a writer and a player. Whereas in a storytelling game, you're pretty much just a, a writer, even at table. Because as I said, you know, I walk outside and it's raining and there are barbarians screaming in through the gates. And the GM is like, you know, in a storytelling game, the GM would, would have to, okay, have to accept that and pick up what you, whatever you said, no matter how bad it is or how good it is, he'd have to try to do that uh, and take that onto himself. Whereas in a role-playing game, it's uh, you just react in character and you forget that you're, you are yourself and you become your character. That's what a role-playing game should be. But I, I digress. I'm sorry about my rant and rambling. I just want to make sure everybody understands we're on the same page so we can contrast these styles. So until I see you again, good day and good gaming.